Let me give you another example of the power of masking in Lightroom as we turn this raw file into this final image. As always, you can follow along this Lightroom tutorial by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's jump into it. As always, we want to start with the basic adjustments. So let's open up the basic panel where we can set up our image for more advanced adjustments later on. So I want to I want this image to be very well saturated. I'm going to change the profile for that, going from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape, which will bring up the base saturation quite a bit, as you can see. Then next, let's take a look at the histogram. It's actually quite well exposed. There is no clipping in the darker or brighter areas of the image. But overall, I want this shot to be more on the darker side. That doesn't mean I'm going to drop the exposure. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the highlights all the way which will reveal more details in the sky where the most highlights are located. Then I'm also going to drop the shadows, which will make the darker parts of the image darker, making this whole scene look a lot more dramatic. I'm also going to slightly bring down the blacks just to push the contrast a little further. And for the same effect, again, looking at the histogram, you can see we do have a lot of room with those brighter areas. That means I can use the whites to introduce contrast by raising the whites slider. Let's pull it up like this, bringing it closer to the edge here. All right, that's looking pretty good already. Now I also wanna work on the white balance. I actually don't wanna change the temperature, but what I want to do instead is to bring down the tint, kind of making the green tones a little more intense this way by intentionally introducing a green color cast. All right, then I'm going to bring up the texture, which will kind of make the image look sharper. And I'm going to bring down the clarity, which will apply a very subtle glow on top of it. Then let's bring up the vibrance. And here we have the image after the basic adjustments. Let's compare to before real quick. You can see uh, the image has a lot more contrast Thanks to the basic adjustments, the colors do look much more intense now. And now we need to focus on specific areas of the image to make it really dramatic and moody. So what I want to do is to create light and shadows. I want to make the very top part of the sky much, much darker, bring out much more of the cloud structure. I'm also going to make the very near foreground a lot darker introducing a lot more shadows while at the same time I'm making the bottom of the sky brighter, kind of emulating light behind that hill. And I'm also going to make the top of the hill and the trees on that hill a little brighter. Let's open up the masking panel. And I think let's start with something simple. I'm going with a sky selection mask. With the first mask, all I want to do is to bring out more of that very cool looking cloud structure. And we can do that by simply playing around with the clarity. This usually works really, really good, as you can see, as I bring up the clarity slider. So I would say let's go with something around 30. That should be fine. Right away, I want to make the top part of the sky darker. I'm going to start this with a linear gradient. I'm going to target the very top, kind of following along these darker clouds, which are already existing in the image right here. And let me pull down the linear gradient a little further. You can see it's overlaying the trees on the hill, but I don't really want to change them. So we need to find a way to get rid of the trees from this mask. We can do that by clicking on those three dots. Then we want to choose intersect mask with and click on select sky. This way, the linear gradient will only affect areas within the sky. Okay, then to make it darker, I'm going to start by bringing down the exposure and I'm going to drop it a lot to make it really, really dark and dramatic. Wonderful. Let's also boost the contrast. This will also help bringing out more of that cloud structure, making these clouds look more impactful. Perfect. What we can do as well is to bring down the shadows, making the darker parts of the clouds even darker, adding further adding contrast. And let's see, I might even want to drop the blacks. All right, that's looking perfect. Now that we have made the top part of the sky darker, let's make the bottom part of the sky brighter. I'm going to start with a new sky selection. And since we only want to affect the bottom part, we need to subtract and I'm going to choose a linear gradient 
And doing this, I can nicely take out all the parts which I don't want to change. So you can see I have only targeted the bottom part of the sky like this. And now to make it brighter, simply bring up the exposure. And this way we are creating this really cool looking light effect behind that hill. All right, I do think I can also bring up the whites. As I bring up the whites, I'm paying close attention to the histogram because you don't want to introduce any clipping in the highlights. But right around here looks very, very nice. And making the sky brighter like this behind our subject will help make the subject pop. So that's another benefit of this cool looking light effect. Now, what about the foreground? Let me choose a linear gradient and I'm going to cover most of that foreground like this. And to create the shadow, which I want to add to the foreground, again, all I need to do is to simply pull down the exposure, making the foreground darker this way. So let's drop it like that. We could also bring up the contrast very slightly, making it look a little more intense, but that should be fine for now. And as we're getting closer to the camera, I want the image to get even darker. So I'm going to use another linear gradient. This time I'm making it slightly smaller in the very near foreground like this. And again, I'm dropping the exposure because that's where I want the image to be the darkest. So let's bring it down like this. Now we have one area left and that's the top of the hill and the trees, of course, which I want to make brighter. Let me use a radial gradient for that. I'm going to try to include the trees and parts of the top of the hill for that. That's looking pretty solid, but again, we have parts selected with this mask, which we don't need, want to change, the sky in this case. So what we need to do is to click on subtract and choose select sky. That's looking much, much better. Now we can introduce light to that specific area. And again, what we are going to do for that is to bring up the exposure. I also want to bring up the whites. All right. I even think I want to add some texture and some more clarity in here. Okay, that's looking cool. Now let me add one more radial gradient with which I'm going to target the, the top of the hill on the right side of the trees. Again, I'm subtracting a sky mask and I'm also going to subtract a brush because I don't want to affect those trees right here. So let me get rid of them real quick. All right, that should be fine. And again, I'm going to introduce a little more brightness to this side of the hill by simply bringing up the exposure. Wonderful. And at this point, I think we are pretty much done. Let me just try to add one more mask. I'm going to choose another radial gradient coming in from the left side. I'm going to place the center of this radial, radial gradient outside of the image. And with this radial gradient, I want to make the sky in the back brighter. So again, we need to modify this mask, clicking on those three dots, go to intersect mask with and choose select sky to not affect the foreground. And then let's bring up the exposure. All right, that's looking much, much better. And here we have the image after the masking adjustments. So now let me turn off all the masks. That was our image after some basic adjustments. Looking pretty okay, but still rather flat. With the masks, we added some really nice light and shadows to the image, kind of guiding the viewer's eye right to the trees on the hill with these cool light effects. And the masking stuff wasn't even that complex, so you can do a lot of crazy things here. Now that we're done with the masking adjustments, let's also take a look at the color grading, but there's not much going on. I wanna start in the color mixer in the saturation panel. I kinda of wanna boost those fresh spring tones. So I'm going to bring up the yellow saturation and I also wanna bring up the green saturation. Wonderful. The sky might be a little too intense, so let me bring down the blue saturation just a bit like this. All right. And I'm also going to head into the luminance tab where we can further work on the contrast between all these colors. That means I'm going to bring down the blue luminance, which will make the sky even darker. And I'm going to bring up the green luminance, which will make the foreground brighter. Perfect. Then let's also head down into the calibration tab. 
and I'm going to bring down the blue primary hue just because I like what this does to the image and I'm going to further boost the saturation here. Perfect. Then let's sharpen the image in the details panel. I'm going to bring down the radius. Let's increase the details. Hold on the Alt key while adjusting the masking slider like this. You can see we can nicely target the subject of the image. And then let's bring up the amount of sharpening. And we're done. Now there's a distracting object on the far left side of the image. We can just crop it out. So let's do that real quick. All right. And there we have the finished image. I hope this little Lightroom tutorial was helpful. If you want to support my work, it would be great if you would subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions left, feel free to write a comment. And thank you so much for watching this video.